I am Lina Badiman. I am the director of the Cardiovascular Research Center in Barcelona at the Hospital of San Pablo. And I am the chair of the Council on Basic Science of the European Society of Cardiology. And I have the pleasure of having with me today uh, Professor uh, Siad Malat. Uh, he is a professor of cardiovascular medicine at the University of Cambridge here in the UK and also uh, have uh, here with us uh, Professor Klaus Priesner. He is a professor of biochemistry and, in, and pathobiochemistry at the University of Gießen in Germany. He is the head of biochem the biochemical, uh, biochemistry medical school and is a former uh, editor-in-chief of uh, uh, thrombosis and hemostasis. So welcome here. We are going to discuss uh, on the role of new pathways in uh, what has been uh, a big problem in cardiology as it is ischemia and reperfusion. We have had a lack of uh, uh, mechanisms of preventing what the, the injury that the heart suffers after uh, ischemia. And uh, you are experts in two areas that I think will bring novelty for the future. As such, I would like to ask uh, uh, Klaus, uh, what is his uh, opinion on the role of uh, extracellular RNA and RNSs on the problem of uh, ischemia reperfusion? Thank you, uh, Lina. Um, the keyword injury is the prominent keyword uh, we worked on since many years um, in regard to the molecules that can be released and liberated from injured, ischemic or otherwise stressed cells and tissues. And this is particular an event uh, uh, taken uh, part in the myocardial infarction under the situation ischemia uh, reperfusion injury. And here <clears throat> we discovered that extracellular nucleic acids, in particular RNA, are liberated and play a functional role in the reperfusion injury uh, processes. Uh, in particular, extracellular RNA, the nucleic acid that is temporarily seen uh, in the extracellular space, in plasma, in uh, interstitial fluids, uh, is able to interact with cytokines, with growth factors, and many other molecules to produce a robust uh, injury-related uh, process and response in many tissues, including the myocardium. Okay. I would like to ask uh, Siad, he's a, an expert in inflammation, uh, what's the role of immunomodulation or, or inflammatory cells in the, in the uh, cardiac injury, uh, ischemic injury, and also in the post-infarction phases? Yeah, I, th I think there, there are important roles for them. So I, um, my lab, I come from the air, um, area of atherosclerosis where we study inflammation and immune responses. And now we are interested in ischemic injury because, as you know, there are a few drugs that are able to inhibit the process right now. And we believe that the inflammation, the inflammatory response after uh, ischemia is important in uh, modulating the tissue remodeling that uh, that occurs after after um, ligature of the artery. So what we are interested in right now is interactions between different subtypes of immune cells. And my group has recently shown that B lymphocytes, which were not really thought um, to be important in this process, are in fact orchestrating the inflammatory response after myocardial infarction, and particularly. Um, uh, coordinating the other cells in order to um, alter the inflammatory milieu and, and, and myocardial infarction there. So we believe that targeting this process may, may be very important. Good. We are discussing here really basic science findings, but what is the level of evidence we have for the role of your two topics? So what's the level of evidence we have for uh, defending the cause of extracellular RNA as a possible uh, new mechanism and potential target uh, for preventing or treating the effects of ischemia and ischemia reperfusion? I think there is uh, uh, ample uh, in vitro as well as in vivo evidence now accumulated mostly by our work that demonstrates that extracellular RNA, this uh, nucleic acid that should not be long 
uh, to the outside of cells, but which upon ischemic uh, preconditioning and uh, other events is present there, uh, is not only working as an alarm signal, but it has indeed profound functional um, activities. Uh, and in this regard, it induces uh, the robust release of cytokines from cells, particularly from monocytes macrophages. And this uh, provides a what we call damaging interplay between this nucleic acid outside cells and cytokine production, particularly in the situation of ischemia reperfusion. Uh, this is measurable. Uh, the um, uh, factors that uh, are released particularly are including tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukins, chemokines, and etc. And they are all known to induce and worsen the situation of ischemia reperfusion in the heart. Good. So I will ask you the same question. Which is the level of evidence we have for the impact of B cells and uh, the immunomodulation yeah, of course. in the well, heart? Well, Lena, I think that, that the level of evidence is, evidence is quite strong because we have data in, in animal models of the disease where we uh, deplete these B lymphocytes and see the um, reduction in infarction size uh, and the improvement of the heart function. And since we know what is the uh, link between these B lymphocytes and the um, um, detrimental response, which are chemokines that are produced by these cells, we measured them, in fact, in humans with myocardial infarction, and these are related to cardiovascular events. So we have a pretty good evidence from the, from the animal experiments and from human translational studies. Okay, thank you very much to both. Thank you, Klaus. Thank you, Siad. This was very uh, uh, clarifying because uh, these are new mechanisms and I think we need new mechanisms and new targets for this difficult problem because existing uh, interventions are not working. And today we had the trial presented in the meeting that showed no effects also. So ischemia reperfusion is a clinical uh, problem with, uh, that requires a lot of research. Thank you very much. Thank you.